the applause. Uh, welcome back, everyone. I hope you got plenty to eat and are feeling refreshed. Um, so glad to have you all back here and to introduce our next speaker, who is Kuhn Pais, and he is the lead developer for XApp at the XRPL Labs. Uh, Kuhn's going to talk a little bit about his experience using the decentralized exchange feature and how powerful it can be when leveraging a trading platform. Up next, Kuhn. Hey guys. Thank you very much, Amy. So yeah, I'm gonna talk about uh, the decentralized exchange a little bit. So my name is Kuhn Pass, and uh, I'm a developer at uh, XRPL Labs, the creators of XAM. You can find me on Twitter, uh, at Kuhn Pass. So um, I wanna talk to you about the decentralized and centralized exchanges real quick. Because why do we actually want to use a decentralized exchange? Well, there are a few key, th key things about it. It mainly has to do with um, the control. Who has the control? Well, the centralized control, uh, the centralized exchanges, they have all the control. Um, and it's not really transparent. You do not know where the trades are coming from uh, or if the liquidity, what they provide, if that is real. Uh, we can know that with a decentralized exchange. We can have a look through the order book. We know which account they create, which accounts created it, and everything. So there is one advantage with centralized exchange compared to the XRPL DEX. That is the high speed trading, because currently on the DEX we just have the speed that the XRPL ledger provides, and that's around four seconds right now. Um, the liquidity of the DEX is right as of right now is uh, something we need to work on because it's quite low, um, but. We do have uh, a few options, and a lot of people are working on that. So um, I've created this X app um, to uh, make sure everyone can use like uh, all the decentralized data, because that was really important point of um, what I've made. Um, and the reason for that is is that like now a lot of exchanges use like a data API or a backend, and I wanted to use the WebSocket API. Um, and it needed to be fast and efficient as well. Um, and the, the, intuitive, the intuitive design um, was also for traders and non-traders because the blockchain on itself can be quite daunting for people who have never interacted with it. Um, and it's quite important to get that right so people do not make the wrong mistakes and lose their money because it's all on their hand and there's no one to blame except yourself. So that's really important. Um, and that there is no restrictions on currency pairs. I'll show that in a little bit. So how did I create this? So to create this app, uh, and we first need to have a connection to the WebSocket API. So we create a new WebSocket in a phone app, and we start off with some commands. So the first one is the account info, some of you might know. So we use that to get the balance, the XRP balance of the account, but not only that, if it actually exist or not, otherwise it would throw out an error. After we know all that, we go into the active orders and ripple state. We, we want to get those two um, with the account objects method. So what do they do? So the active offers are basically the offers that are, st those are objects on the ledger. I will show you how that object looks like in a little bit. And the ripple state is basically your IOUs or your assets or the trust lines you have set up at your account. And we need to know that to parse. That's later on as well. And the transaction history is to see what the closed offers are. So what offers have you made in the past to show the user? Um, also, what we need to know, of course, is the order book. Because the order book is very important for traders to know what the liquidity is at that moment and what the orders have been put in and the prices that they're going for. We subscribe to that as well. Um, but also we subscribe to the account. Um, so we get all incoming transactions and we can parse all that. So we can notify the user as well as what's happening to their offer, because that's really important. Um, so if we look at the order book, so if we subscribe to that, we also get these transactions incoming. So we can actually get the market price, which is basically the definition of the last traded price, which we need to get um, to show the user what it was last trading for. We need to do that so people can, well, practically make a market order, or this is technically not possible in the XP ledger. We can make it possible with some trickery. So how do we create an offer on the XP ledger? We start off with a transaction type that is an offer create. 
All this information can be found on the XRP ledger.org, so xrpl.org. Um, so the transaction type is an offer create. Uh, what we do with that, we need to fill in the account. Um, so that's, that's, and the fee. So the fee will be 12 drops, which is really low, um, as you might know. Um, there's some flags we can use for the offers, which are quite, uh, quite nice to know, because we can actually make an immediate or cancel offer or a fill or kill offer. So what do, they, what do those mean? Well, an immediate or cancel for the non-traders is basically that you try to fill everything and it will not throw an error technically, um, but it tries to fill everything it can and then it succeeds the transaction. But it doesn't create an offer object on a ledger. A fill or kill is a little different. It behaves a little different. It needs to try to fill the entire amount that you put in and if it doesn't do that, it'll throw an error. The sell flag is something else um, but I won't get into that. So the taker gets and the taker pays, that is basically how you define the limit order. So the taker gets, so that is basically what the taker will get. And in this instance, it's in drops. Um, so that will be, in this instance, like 20 XRP. Uh, the taker pays is US dollar from GitHub, and the value is two. So now we've defined that. Now we go into the offer object. So this is what we basically create once it's, once it's active or open once you fetch the, all the account objects. So, what we, so why do we need to know this? So we know that this one is like basically a good till cancel um, offer. So it will stay active until the user cancel it or it's totally filled. So. We have this, and there are a few key things that we can use to parse its data. Because what's so unique about the XRP ledger, we can chain all these transactions together with the previous transaction ID. So what we do with that is that this offer object, as you can see, is that there is a previous transaction ID that we can fetch and chain all transactions. So we want to get the offer create transaction for something cool that's, so we can show the field status. So we can chain them all together and we know what happened to that offer object. So the sequence is something else, that is the offer create sequence. So when someone created the offer, it will create a sequence. So every transaction creates a sequence on the account. And basically we can identify the, the transactions with that sequence because it will, that information will be given. And here you see the limit order as well, like the taker gets and the taker pays. The index is something we can identify the offer object as well. So that won't change. So now about the parsing and like how do we do the parsing of all this data we're gonna get. So with each transaction that's coming in, we get metadata. So what do we do with that? So, what, so I'm showing here like a three different types of changes to the nodes. So there, you can have a created node. This actually means that you create an offer object uh, on the ledger, so that's happened. And you can see there is a new field key, and the ledger entry type is an offer, and you see the ledger index. So that's the same index as here, as you can see at the bottom. So we can identify that offer. Uh, the modified node is something, so we modify things. So what do we modify? Or actually, what's modified? And um, What's modified could be a couple of things. So what I told you, like sometimes you create an offer object and sometimes you don't. So when you create an offer object, it's only when you have a good till cancel, a good till cancel object. So that only happens when you did not, did not put any flags in, like an immediate deal cancel or a fill or kill. So then we can actually create this object and we can look and see all the data. With a modified node, um, we actually can see some things that are really interesting. So we can actually modify the offer object, but we can also modify the ripple state or the account root. So if we know these changes that are happening because of that you created this offer, we know what, field st what the field status is gonna be, which in a later slide you will see why that is, well, necessary and need to, we need to know. And a deleted no could mean two things. Uh, it could mean that a user has 
cancel the offer manually or it has been filled in its total. So that's interesting to know as well because we do not need to keep track of that offer anymore. So how will that look in a UI for the user to see? So here you see we have made a transaction for Mixer, oh, we actually created an offer for Mixer P to a test currency and it's currently active. So it's an object on the ledger. The number you're seeing be below that is the offer sequence that it's created. And next to that you see the date on which it's created. Below that you see again the status is active and the filled status is partially filled. So it modified some states. So it modified your ripple state or your account root. So in this example, we were selling, we created an offer for 260 XRP and we wanted to buy 0 0.005 test currency. And we have partially filled it because we've changed all these transactions because this example actually involved like three or four transactions and all combined, we can show you this. With buying, so we actually, we bought 0.004 test currency and we sold 181 XRP. And with the price, as you can see as well, so there's one thing we do not know. We do not know what the base currency was of the transaction. So what we'll show you, we show you both because otherwise you don't know what the base currency is and you still don't know. But well, that's okay, you don't need that. And the condition is good to cancel because it's still active and there's no flag set. And the fees paid is only 12 drops. And you can cancel it right there. And you see a shorthand of a different transaction for the user. So all combined with all these methods and parsing we've done we can show the user this. On the right side, you see the order book and the market price. And on the left side, you have a little form on how you can buy with a market order or basically a limit order and you can set your flags. But below that, you can see what the filled status is. It's not being filled, it's still empty. So basically, this is what you can do with the XRP Ledger Dex. So it's quite powerful and it lo just looks like a normal trading app and that's basically what, we're gonna go, what we wanted to go after. That you just have something that just works just, just as any other and you have no idea that you're actually using the blockchain. And with that, that concludes my talk and you can trade as if your underpants is on fire. <laughs> so thank you very much.